As we approach the end of the major arcana in this tarot series, though there's still a ways to go, we get to some of the tarot cards that represent concepts uh, that are quite spiritually complex, spiritually sophisticated. And uh, it may be difficult to be able to express the fullness of them um, with regular language, but we're going to do our best. And uh, the Sun card is itself an expression of an experience that, that can only really be understood after you've gone through it, which is the Enlightenment state. You can understand a, a context of it that you can apply to your life when you're using the cards to get uh, to do readings for self-analysis or for divination um, but uh, there are levels of it that that uh, are trying to describe a par a part of the spiritual path um, that is uh, quite beyond any kind of expression the aeon or the judgment card goes even a step beyond that as does the universe card which is the the last one the world or the universe uh, the card is called judgment that we're going to be talking about today but in some decks it's been called the aeon and uh, there's a reason for that in uh, in the original deck it came to be known as the judgment card because uh, the reference to it, the context of it in the, in the Christian perspective is the scene of what's termed the last judgment from the book of Revelation. <clears throat> it's, uh, in other words, in one sense, a card about the end of the world. But uh, what it really is, is a card about the going beyond, in terms of your, your own world, going beyond the level of personal awakening or personal transformation into how you connect to the human race and the transformation of the human race. So in the traditional judgment card, in the one you'd see in the, the medieval decks, you had an image of an angel coming from on high blowing a trumpet, which is a, a scene from the book of Revelation, uh, which is the event that precludes the raising of the dead. It, what, it's what happens uh, at, the, at the end of the world, where the, the dead will be raised and, and the living and the dead will be judged, hence judgment. Mm -hmm. In the deck that we're using, we see a, a similar kind of image. Let's see if I can get a good picture of it there. Here you have uh, a tree, which is the tree of life. It has there also the ladder, which is the, what's sometimes called Jacob's ladder, which represents the process of, of spiritual transcendence, the different steps of spiritual transcendence. There are two figures at the bottom, one that's, that's fallen and one that's raised. And at the top of the tree, you have an angel blowing a trumpet. The trumpet has a cross on it. The cross is that union of time and space, you'll remember. And the top of the, the tree is surrounded by the Ouroboros, the snake or serpent eating itself. And uh, so this is a very nice interpretation on this card uh, of the, the meaning of this judgment, which could also be called the aeon, and, and aeon is a term from, from Western occultism that has come to, to be used to represent the end of one age and the beginning of another age, the shift in human consciousness, not on the individual level, but on the level of humanity as a whole. So it's about humanity's evolution, you could say. And um, this is in the context of your spiritual path the point where you, you have to go after your own transformation, after a moment where you have a, a transformation of understanding, where you transcend yourself, 
uh, to then apply that to the world and to the people around you, to the, to the, to the whole of humanity for the benefit of humanity. So the aeon is reflected in an Eastern philosophy by a couple of different concepts. One is the idea of the, the bodhisattva, which is that uh, an individual enlightenment is what's called the arhat state. It's where you yourself have had this transcendent experience, you've become something completely new. And the bodhisattva is uh, an awakened being who is determined to share that state, not just that doesn't see awakening as just something that has to happen to him, but to all of humanity, to the whole world. And this is reflected in the, the concept of, of what you can call the Buddha field. It's the idea that, that your transformation brings with it a new clarity and that you have to express this clarity to the world around you, to the people around you, and that by doing so, you give off an energy, a Buddha field, that allows other people to also have an opportunity to transform themselves. Now, I've said before in teaching that you can't change anybody. You can't save anybody. You can't transform anybody. And that's true. And that's true for somebody who is just starting on the path. And it's true for someone who is the, the guru of gurus. It doesn't matter. You can't change any other person. But as you grow in awareness, if you ap apply this to the world, if you share it, then you create a space around you that may allow people to be able to transform themselves. That It may allow it to be easier for them to make this transformation. Because to be able to transform yourself, a person has to have the willingness to do it, but they also have to have the right conditions around them. They have to be able to have had an opportunity to, first of all, just know, to realize that there's the possibility of them doing things differently. And the space, the invitation, you could say, or, or a, um, a comfortable environment for them to do it, some kind of an encouragement, you could say. And so you can't change anyone, even after awakening, you can't change anybody else. But somebody might want to be changed, but might not have the opportunity in the form of a space to do it, or in the form of uh, an understanding that it is possible to do it. And what somebody who has reached this, this stage, that is an awakening that is beyond just the individuality, but an awakening that understands the connection that, that the individual has to the whole human experience, that creates a field there that can let people suddenly realize that it is possible for them to do the same. And so this Buddha field encourages the transformation of everyone, not just you, but the whole of humanity. It's about humanity's evolution. Now, what about the last judgment? Well, the last judgment is, you could say, an apocalypse. And an apocalypse, in its original context, means really a, a secret truth. And the secret truth of, of an apocalypse is that it is, it is an end of the world in the sense that humanity breaks free of a certain boundary, of a certain paradigm, a zeitgeist. That's part of what this symbol of the, the Ouroboros is about. It represents um, the, the whole of creation, and yet at the same time it represents the boundary of creation in its present form. 
and that trumpet blast that the that the angel rings out in the in the original judgment card is a vibration of a new kind it's a new declaration that changes all the rules it's about transforming the limitations of humanity as it currently is and into something different a new paradigm so that's the trumpet that shakes the world. It trembles everything from the top right down to the bottom. And in a way, everything that is old is destroyed. It is the end of that world. It's the beginning of a new world. Each being who is awakened and every being who isn't awakened too, has a responsibility, not just to themselves, but to the whole of, of, of life, and especially the whole of humanity, um, to seek to bring that change, to make that transformation happen, so that we can step forward, right? It's what was said in, in Thus Spake Zarathustra, is that, that uh, human beings, that, that we are here um, for not just our sake, but for the sake of what will become after us, what humanity will become, what we are going to become or to turn into. And the teaching of mysticism is that the real ability to change the world depends on first the rest of that mystical process that we've already talked about. Because to change the world, you have to first change yourself. When you change yourself, when you have that experience of transformation, then you discover that trumpet blast, which can also be called the word. You, you find a new word, and that word, in your way of expressing that word, without having to try to convince anyone or try to force anyone to change or to make any, any change on anyone else, which is impossible, the fact that you change, that you discover that new sound, that new word, that has never been heard before because it's even though there is enlightenment that happens all the time each enlightenment brings with it a new kind of flavor a new a new expression and with that new expression it allows people to change their whole paradigm it shakes up that whole uh, concept destroys that closed circle and creates something different and it's a cycle that continues with each new transformation. So transformation feeds upon itself. The sun is the first step then, that step of that personal transformation where you yourself have changed. The aeon or the judgment card is where you realize this word, this new expression, and bring it out. You declare it. And this is the beginning then, not the end of the spiritual work. Uh, we have all of these cards and, and most spiritual teaching putting this emphasis on personal transformation. And that's absolutely necessary because without that personal transformation, nothing changes. But that's really only the beginning. It's where it starts. Enlightenment is the start of spiritual work. Transcending the self is becoming a new kind of body of light, an embodiment of a divine expression that is completely unique and that, that transforms everything. So you become that um, expression, that spirit, that prophet, whatever you want to call it, of this word, a new word that comes out of you through creation that ends one universe and begins a new one. So it makes sense then that the next card is the world or the universe.